Okay, good day everyone. This is a talk on perpetual securities. All right, uh, this paper is done by DBS Research Group, and uh, I would like to thank Vince from Retirement for sharing this uh, nice uh, write up with me. All right, so uh, yeah, let's dive straight into what perpetual securities are. All right, they are a class of hybrid instruments. All right, that uh, allow them to diversify their capital base. All right, so what this means is that uh, it's an alternative way for the REIT to borrow money. Right, rather than just borrowing from the bank. Right. Uh, so what is good about this uh, alternative way of borrowing money? All right. Perpetual securities is actually classified as equity. Right. So when it's classified as equity, it's not classified under liabilities in the balance sheet, which means that when they calculate gearing, they do not have to include the amount they borrow as perpetual securities into that calculation of gearing. So it naturally lowers their gearing ratio. Right, so that's the good part because uh, as REITs have this uh, gearing cap that they have to adhere to uh, because of MAS, right? But the downside is that generally perpetual securities come at a higher interest cost, right? Normally 3 to 5.2% as compared to debt, right? So normally if they borrow money from the bank, they should be able to get a lower interest rate than this, right? So that's the downside of perpetual securities, <coughs> right? So, uh, yeah, so one thing about perpetual securities they tend to reset after some time which I believe is roughly five years right so when they reset right what happens is that uh, the interest rates that you are paying for these perpetual securities may change according to the interest rate environment so currently we know interest rates is high right so perpetual securities that are going to be reset in the near future will incur higher interest rates which means that the REITs will have to pay more for this debt Right, so clearly that will affect DPU. It's not good for the read. The read need to figure out how to deal with this increase in cost of their borrowing. All right, and uh, DBS estimates it could erode DPU by four percent for some S reads. <coughs> right, so uh, we talked about this a bit about this earlier. So there are three ways to deal with uh, perpetual securities. Right, so allow reset of coupon rates when the five years is up. Right, so this means that like mentioned earlier we'll just let the perpetual securities re-rate in terms of how much interest i have to pay based on the current interest rate environment which is high right so this is going to just uh, make the the cost of uh, interest costs higher right then the second thing they can do is redemption which means to say if i borrow 200 million dollars as perpetual securities right i'll just pay back right so uh, how does this money come about maybe i borrow from the bank Right, so borrowing from the bank will give me likely lower interest cost as compared to perpetual securities. But the downside is my gearing will go up, right? Because now it will the equity side you will take out perpetual securities, but that appears now in the liability side of the balance sheet, right? And that needs to be calculated as gearing, right? So in the gearing ratio, the numerator will go up, the denominator because uh, your buildings are the same, right? It will actually stay the same, so your gearing ratio will go up, <coughs> all right? Or otherwise you divest assets right which again will affect gearing ratio because for asset divestment it means that your denominator in this case will decrease right so gearing is calculated by liabilities over assets so when your liabilities stay the same right because remember when you pay off perpetual securities it doesn't affect your liabilities right so only your denominator drops and that again increases your gearing right so you can see a uh, perpetual securities is a double-edged sword uh. when you use it uh, it's a good thing because your gearing will increase but later on when you deal with it somehow and you want to get rid of it it will cause your gearing to go up anyway right so anyway uh what what was DB, what is dbs trying to say here they say in the best scenario of higher for longer interest rate outlooks which increasingly looks likely now because the cpi data in the us lately has not been very good right it's still trending upwards instead of going down to two percent right we may uh, have interest rates higher for longer right so uh, DBS says that Capital Land Ascenders REIT has sufficient financial flexibility to deal with it, whereas the things that we should worry about are AIMS APEC REIT, Land Lease REIT, and SunTech REIT. Right? Why? Because their, their debt ratios are more stretched, la. so basically their gearing ratio is quite high, and they may need to divest assets to uh, deal with these perpetual securities. <coughs> right, so this is the order in which uh, uh, how uh, things need to be paid off let's say a REIT goes bankrupt right uh, the money is normally used to pay off debt first right then perpetual securities then stock right so it's in this order which means that if anybody gets wiped out it's the stockholders uh, 
right? So that's how perpetual securities are ranked in terms of uh, paying, paying off uh, uh, in distress times, right? So I think we've discussed most of this, right? So uh, we said that perpetual securities, the good thing is that they just naturally lower gearing, gearing right? Because it's like I borrow money as perpetual securities, but it doesn't increase my liabilities. Okay, however, regulators have a safeguard whereby they have something called adjusted interest coverage ratio, right? And this in adjusted interest coverage ratio, right, is supposed to include the payment for perps, right? So uh, if you have to cover the perps as well, then this adjusted interest coverage ratio basically does take into account the fact that you have additional borrowings, lah, right? So uh, your adjusted interest coverage ratio, including perps, right? Uh, has to be 2.5x before you can get up to 50%, right? So this is supposed to be a safeguard, right? So anyway, uh, how is the uh, perpetual securities uh, actually uh, interest rate calculated, right? So they actually take the current Singapore benchmark rate, which is SOR and SORA, right? With an additional capital spread, right? So what this means is that when the bank lends you money, he must first borrow the money from someone, right? So at the rate at which he borrows money from someone is uh, this current Singapore benchmark rate. Okay, however, he cannot lend you at the same rate because then it doesn't make money, right? So he has to add a additional credit spread, right? So uh, this percentage plus this percentage is actually the amount you pay for borrowing money uh, when you are at SREIT, right? So this credit spread, right, is a function of the issuer's credit rating. So when you look at all the credit rating of the REITs, right, it tells you how likely the, the REIT is able to meet its credit obligations, right? Larger REITs with stronger track record are more likely to be able to pay back and therefore they command a lower spread, right? That means they pay less extra interest, lah, right? So that's why uh, being a large REIT has its advantages. Lah. Normally people see you as more stable, especially if you have a very strong track record. Right then, uh, they will offer you lower interest rates. Right, first call as we talked about earlier is five years, right? So the issuer can redeem or reset, right, based on the prevailing benchmark rates that we have talked about earlier. But the good thing about resetting, right, is that every six months, uh, you actually can consider, uh, paying off these perps, right? Okay, so uh, I'm not going to talk about everything, right? So this is one of the main reason why perps was, uh, be becoming, uh popular because MAS dropped the gearing ratio from 60% to 45%, right? So uh, SREITs decided to use perps to uh, increase their ability to borrow money. Right, and in COVID times, right, I think uh, REIT managers were worried that the portfolio uh, valuations would drop. That means uh, the REITs uh, assets, the valuation drop, right? So that naturally increased your gearing. Right, so to protect this uh, gearing ratio again, they turn to perps. Right, so we see the peak amount of perps issued. Right, is sometime this during this period, which is COVID period, and they should be first reset in twenty twenty five and twenty twenty six. Right, so this is the period we have to watch out for. All right, so I don't think I'll talk about this. Yeah, we talked about this already. Okay, I don't think I'll cover this. Right. So yeah, I, I, this is quite technical. I don't think we want to talk about it. So we just yeah, we just talk about what are the options that are available to read. So reset is allow perps to reset to current benchmark rates, right? It's fast and simple, right? And you have the option to redeem every six months, right? So let's say you get money later on, you can decide ah, I want to redeem this perp, right? You can do so, right? Uh, it's more costly than that. We already said that uh because uh perpetual securities generally you have to pay more interest rate. Lah. Okay, then it alters uh, investors' year expectation. All right, and redeem means that I pay off the perp, right, by using new bank loan. Normally, this will save me money, right? That means uh, if I save money from paying interest rates, I can pay my unit holders more uh, dividends, which is a good thing, right? But it will increase my gearing ratio, right? So if my gearing ratio is already high, then I can't really do this. New currency means I divest my assets. Right, hopefully the lower yielding one to redeem perps. Right, again, potentially this could lead to DPU accreditation. Right, that means if let's say I sell a building, that uh, the amount of money I collect is actually less than the amount I'm paying for the perps. Actually, this is a good thing for my read, right? Because I can use the excess uh, money that I am using to pay for the perps to actually distribute as dividends. Right, so uh, yeah, 
again loss of uh, future income from divested property and again lead to higher leverage right so you can see that whatever they do here and here right it will lead to higher gearing because this will this will increase your numerator when you calculate gearing this will decrease your denominator right so uh, you can look at this uh, I'll try to put the DVS uh, uh, report downstairs so that uh, in the link below so that you can have a look at it if you want to all right i'll just go through quickly the last part because video is getting quite long right so generally uh, they estimate the cost of perks going up by average of 2.1 percent right so you can see that for example a read their current uh, cost is uh, 5.65 all right if they allow it to reset it will become 8.21 right so the increase in cost is about 2.56 percent <coughs> right and this will affect their dpu quite quite a bit uh, three three percent and four percent right it seems like aa read has the most uh, impact from uh, allowing their uh, perps to reset okay so uh not going to talk about this we briefly covered it again the numbers i'll just uh reach through so that you can look at it yourself if you want to via the link below Okay, all, all credit to DBS, right? So anyway, I just want to look at uh, what DBS views are for each read, right? Actually, if we look at things like uh, AA read, all right, and they say that best option is to redeem, right? I, I think this isn't a big issue. It means that their gearing is relatively low enough that, you know, they can just pay off these uh, perks and move on with life, right? So their gearing ratio will go up, but other than that, it's not such a big uh, issue right so the, the those that are a bit worrying are the the option the best option seems to be new currency uh, because new currency means i have to sell something right and this normally i believe is the last result for read uh. no read wants to sell something unless they have to uh. okay so this uh capital land escort trust all right so they may have to sell some older lower yielding, yielding assets okay uh, land is read as well this is also a worry Okay, and finally, Suntec read. Right, so these are the three reads that seem to, uh, seems like their best option is to sell assets, uh, which I don't think is a good thing for, for the read in general. Yeah, so uh, we also want to see who which reads have the largest perks as a percentage of total equity, right? So uh, a read and Landis read, and I think finally we just know that Landis read is the one to watch. Okay, is uh, a bit worrying there larger percentage of perps to equity ratio right so they they believe that the manager could uh, need to sell assets okay right so uh, with that i'll end this session thanks for bearing with me okay uh all, all credit to dbs research group right thank you for listening